welcome. Um, COVID-19 uh, update, Sunday the 16th of February. Now, very often outbreaks of disease tend to affect older people and very young people. The very old and the very young are often at increased risk from infections. The elderly, because their immune systems have deteriorated somewhat, and they also often have comorbidities, they have other diseases that can predispose them to problems from a particular infection. And children, because their immune system is not fully developed. So that's always been a concern of mine, that children would be badly affected by this. But um, so far, the background to this is that previous studies of COVID-19 is more likely to infect older adults and particularly men. Now, we think the increase in the number of men that get it, some, some studies show that more men get it and get complications compared to women. The data on that is not absolutely clear yet from China. But it may well be the difference, I think, probably is. I don't believe there's a sexual difference in the virus. I think the difference is that men in China tend to smoke a lot whereas smoking is relatively uncommon in Chinese women. I think that's what's predisposing them to the infection. And the comorbidities we would expect, the hypertension, the diabetes, the, the, the chronic lung disease. That's not too surprising. Now, uh, few infections in children have been reported, which was initially um, reassuring. And this paper will go on to reassure us further, by the way. Now, to be fair, this, this, this paper is published in JAMA. It's, it's Journal of American Medical Association, very prestigious. But it's not the best article I've ever read, to be fair. It's not surprising because these are just being rushed out fairly quickly. But this is written by six very highly qualified Chinese uh, doctors and academics. So it should be a good, it should be a reliable study. Now, um, it's a retrospective study. It involved all hospitalized infants 28 days to one year diagnosed with COVID-19 between the 8th of December 19 and February. So from the 8th of December to the 6th of February, that's a huge period of time. I mean, that's that's um, two months, isn't it? It's ages. So what this group are saying, this is what they're saying, is that they're able to identify nine children. The N, the number in this study is nine. They could identify nine, well, not zero children, sorry, infants, infants, between the age of 28 weeks and one year who were infected by this condition. That's what, they're, uh, that's what they found. Now, if that's true, it's a remarkably reassuringly small number. Um, we'll go on to look at what, why it might not be quite accurate. But nasopharyngeal swabs were collected during hospitalisation. So these were children that were in hospital anyway. So this is likely to be the more poorly children that were already in hospital, which already is a weakness in this study. Let's go on, though. Real-time uh, polymerase chain reaction uh, testing used to detect COVID-19 over two positive tests, the virus. So two positive tests is good. This is the only test we have at the moment, the uh, polymerase chain reaction to grow up the RNA in the virus. So quite happy about the diagnosis there. Now, the results that they're saying is nine infants were infected, seven girls and two boys. So more, more girls than boys there. But on a sample of this size, I'm not sure we can say too much from a sample of this size about that, actually. Um, now, presenting features. Four patients had uh, fever. Two patients just had mild upper respiratory inf uh, inf infection features. A bit surprising, it just makes you wonder if these were later on in the disease because very often we know that the upper respiratory features, the, the chorizal cold type features, tend to present later. But anyway, we've got four patients with fever, which we would expect, two patients with upper respiratory, one asymptomatic patient and two patients for whom no data was available. Now, the asymptomatic patient was considered to be at risk from his family background. So, um, so th that's why that patient was included. So um, fever, mild upper respiratory tract symptoms, or asymptomatic. Now families of all nine infants had at least one infected family member. So these infants got it from family members. I think that's, that's fairly clear. And the uh, infant's infection occurred after the family member's infection. So in every case, it was the family member who got the infection first, and then the infant that got it, indicating that the infection probably came from 
probably came from the family member uh, that was uh, infected. Now, so two very encouraging things here. I mean, even in hospital patients, they only found nine infants between 28 days and one year. It's a remarkably small number. And uh, the, other, the other thing that's uh, encouraging is... Um, where are we? Yeah, n none of the nine infants required uh, intensive care or mechanical ventilation or had any severe complications. So th this is good. I mean, infants here seem to be getting mild disease if they get any at all. So first of all, they're very unlikely to get the disease. And if they get the disease, it seems to be mild, which is just brilliant. So discussion, the number of infected infants identified was small, absolutely very, very small. But why is this? Well, probably they had a lower risk of exposure because they're kept in the home, which is good. And remember, they all got it from family members. So it appears that infants may have a lower risk because they're not exposed to the virus as much as the rest of us who are out in the streets and going to work. Another factor is incomplete identification due to mild or asymptomatic disease. So the authors here are saying that the infants may have a preponderance of uh, mild or asymptomatic disease, therefore weren't picked up. Because remember, these were only hospital patients that, uh, that we're talking about here. Um, now, the authors do say that it's probably not that children, infants, had a greater resistance to infection. They don't think that's true. But they do conclude absolutely that infants can be infected with COVID-19. So that is now proved. We know infants can get it, just that the number was small and the disease course was mild. Family clustering occurred for all infants, all infected infants got it from other family members. Infants who have uh, infected family members, right, so this is a recommendation here. So infants who have infected family members should be monitored to ensure early diagnosis of the condition. So ideally, if there's an infected family member and we all have to stay in the same house, they should be in a separate room if possible. And uh, infected family members sh should be monitored. So the infants need to be monitored with regular temperature checks to see if they're developing coughs or anything like that. Now, it's interesting that um, previous studies found higher percentage of women infected than... than, than uh, no, previous studies found a higher percentage of men infected than women. So in most of the studies so far, there's been more men, but we think that's to do with the smoking. Whereas in this study, more uh, young girls, infant girls, were found to be infected than, um, than infant boys. But given it's a, a, a number of nine, I don't think we can really make too much of a, a big deal about that at the moment. So the, the authors did suggest this, but I'm not convinced that female infants may be more susceptible. Um, of course, infants less than one year cannot wear masks. That's a problem. Um, but we know that masks aren't that protective anyway. But adult carers should be careful to uh, wear masks wash their hands before contact with the infants. So we need to keep the, the infants uh, in as clean an environment as possible. Meticulous infection of us as the, as the caregivers of, to these children, not to pass the infection on and to sterilize the infants toys and tableware regularly. So as we've said, um, only nine in the study, only inclusion of infants who are in hospital, big weaknesses in the study inclusion of only one asymptomatic patient. And of course, this study was retrospective and retrospective studies are known for, um, well, it's just difficult to get all the, sometimes to get all the information after the event. So this is the, uh, the table from the, uh, from the publication. So this is the age of the children, nine months, 11 months, eight months, 10 months, seven months. One month and 26 days, three months, three months, 22 days, at six months of age. This is the sex, female, 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 male, female, 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 male. As I say, I don't think we can infer too much from that, really. So we're dealing with infants between 28 days and uh, one year. There were more females. Now, as we've said before, only, uh, only four, I think it was, had fevers, so... Uh, symptoms at onset. This is the onset of the condition. So that was a fever there. 
that was a mild fever there. That was no symptoms. Uh, the data there that was not available, they had a fever. They had a runny nose and cough, so they had a cough. They had a cough with sputum production, whereas the cough is often dry. But So I'm just wondering if they'd pick these, these two patients up um, later on in the evolution of their condition. That one had a fever, that one the data was not available. Time between, di uh, between emission and diagnosis is, is along there. Um, number of family members infected, so we see that in all cases family members were infected. These all had links to Wuhan apart from the last two. We're not sure about that one and that one didn't. Now, this is the seriously good news here. I'm very pleased about it. Number of infants infected that required intensive care, albeit only from a sample of nine, who required mechanical ventilation or who developed severe complications. And you can see we've got nose all the way across. So in this group of nine infants, None of the infants required intensive care, none required mechanical ventilation, none required severe complications. So where does this paper get us? Well, it's a limited sample size. Um, we're not sure they picked all the patients up, but even if, even if they only picked up 10% of the patients, I mean, that, that would be pretty good. Only nine affected in the entire outbreak. This is the data we have. I mean, if this is true, if this is true, this is remarkably good news. Uh, infants are not getting the infection on a regular basis, which is just uh, just brilliant. And when they are getting it, they don't, see, they, do, they don't seem to have complications. Having said that, they can get it. So we must protect them. Indeed, protect all children. So there'll be more data along, sure, uh, I'm sure, fairly soon. But at the moment, that's what we have. So at the moment, that's uh, fairly promising.